everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the Sustainable Fashion 101 series. If you are new, welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. My name is Jessica. You can also find me on Instagram and on both platforms, I talk about sustainable fashion, luxury goods, and workwear. So today's video is a continuation of what we just discussed, which was leather and faux leather. And I was gonna continue to talk about materials and I decided the way that I'm gonna break those up is to talk about animal derived materials, which will be this time. And then next time I'm gonna talk about plant derived or even semi-synthetic materials. So that's gonna be next. I've decided I'm not gonna do a video unless you all really want me to on like purely synthetic materials because I think we generally know that purely synthetic materials, things made out of polyester and polyurethane and plastics, right, are generally not good for our bodies or for the environment. So I don't really know that that's helpful to really go into. But if you all do want to know something specific about those, then let me know. The material in that group that was requested to be talked about was Alcantara or Alcantara, depending on where you live in the world. And I know that one seems like a suede, like it's an imitation suede kind of material, and it's very durable. But it's just a blend of polyester and polyurethane. So it really just falls into the typical synthetic category. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about wool and under wool. We'll talk about Angora and cashmere, and then we will also talk about silks. It's pretty much all of the big animal derived products besides for leather. And so then next time we'll talk about plants, right? So that's going to be your viscoses, tensiles, modals, lyocils and tensiles, same thing. Um, cotton, just all of those other materials will fall under sort of the, the next one, cupro. There's a lot that you all wanted to talk about in that plant derived, which is great. So we will talk about more of those next time. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So to start with wool, uh, wool of course comes from a sheep and there's questions around the ethics behind it because you're like, okay, well, the sheep is going to get overheated if it's not sheared and all of that is true. The issue comes in the way that the sheep are raised and taken care of and then the way that the wool is obtained. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's, it's kind of gruesome, but you want to look for non-mucilled wool. So mucilled or mucilling is a practice of obtaining wool that can be quite gruesome and generally cause the death and bacteria infections to the sheep. So I'm not going to, you can look it up if you, if you want to know about it, but so non mucilled wool. And then generally also you want to look for things where they talk about the ethics of actually raising the sheep and, and all of that, l l allowing them to roam, allowing them to eat, allowing them to not freeze to death. It's easy to claim that you have sustainably sourced wool. I actually have no way to back that up. So you definitely want to look for certified if that is something that you're concerned about. So cashmere is sort of similar, right? It's goats instead of sheep, but cashmere is an issue because of, it has more environmental damage than general wool does. And that's because cashmere goats cause more damage. So they just have a heavier foot. So they can tend to cause more like deforestation and, and mess up the ground beneath them. They also usually are kind of like overpopulation of cashmere goats causes more damage and the more cashmere people request, right, the more goats are made. And so, you know, that that's what causes a lot of issue. And then of course they don't have a lot of room to roam and things when we have that many. A typical kind of cashmere sweater can come from four to five different goats. So if you're looking for something similar, you can also look at alpaca. Alpacas generally are much less damaging to the environment, just the way that they live. Just in general, have a lower carbon footprint and are just less, less damaging, less deforestation and things happen with alpacas. But alpacas produce more wool, shear them yearly and all of that, and you just get more wool. So I think one alpaca is like more than one sweater. So it's a, it's just a different, a different thing. So cashmere, right? It can be ethically sourced in the same way that wool can be. It can be raised in an ethical manner, but it's just a little more rare. And then in general, just cashmere goats, the more of them we have, the bigger issues we have. And then Angora comes from rabbits. And a lot of times their Angora is, is plucked and it's bloody and causes death and obviously pain. So there is this thing every four months, um, Angora rabbits, lose their fur in something called a molting. They just kind of shed it. 
And so if patience is used and we wait the four months, then you can get Angora totally ethically. It doesn't, it's just on the ground, right? It's not harming, it's not harming them at all. So you can definitely find um, ethically sourced Angora as well. So those are kind of the wool category. And then we'll talk a little bit more about silk. So silk worms are where we get silk. We get them from the cocoon. And the biggest issue is that most of the time the cocoons are quite small. And so when the moth tries to break free from the cocoon, it causes a big hole in the cocoon. And so in the silk weave. So the easiest way to obtain it and the way that most people do is to boil the cocoons, killing the worms inside. And so that is where the ethical concern obviously comes from with silk. Silk is also a great material in terms of the durability, the beauty of it, the it's naturally antimicrobial, and it just also generally is a breathable, beautiful, biodegradable fabric. So unbleached silk is good in terms of chemicals. It actually has a lot of really low water pollution and low like carbon footprint in general as a material and is generally like a low waste material. So it's a really beautiful material. So the issues come again with this chemical aspect, the bleaching aspect or chemicals that are used. And then of course with the ethics of like boiling. <laughs> The other issue is a lot of times the way that the worms are raised are they're so domesticated that they actually require human support to live and to mate and all sorts of things. So they're not kind of allowed to live their like general life in, in a lot of these instances. And then of course they're, they're boiled to death. So that's, that's the ethical concerns. But um, there is a type of silk called peace silk. It's a, a Himza silk. And that silk is, it allows the moths to go free and to live their life and all these things. And then they just use the cocoon that's left behind, even though like a good portion of it is missing, they just use the other portion of it. So that is, that is obviously the ethical way to do that. The issue is again with certification, a lot of places claim that they're using piece silk, but with you, when you look at the supply chain, they're not actually backing that up. So that, that becomes a big issue, but they can be certified. So you want to look for the different certifications with that. So like a GOTS certification, the GOTS or the um, OTEX, OTEX, right? Those are the certifications that you generally want to look for for silk. Those don't necessarily mean peace silk, but they do mean oftentimes that they are more peace silk and then they just have less of a chemical issue with them. So sometimes you're gonna get a no chemical silk and sometimes you're gonna get a piece silk. They're not necessarily always the same, right? So you definitely need to look for all of those. But then if you want a totally non-animal product, there is a new technology that is kind of coming out called bolt threads. And that is, it's called spider silk. It's not actually made from spiders. It just kind of looks like a spider web, but that is a, a new tech um, material. And so it's, it's animal free. For that one so you can look for that as well so those are the other animal based materials i hope that you learned something new and that that was you know helpful to you to kind of know what to look for if you are concerned about the ethics and sustainability behind animal based products animal based products can be great right we often say you want to use natural fibers but then there can be ethical concerns with that so it is definitely possible to get natural fibers more ethically PETA may disagree that it's not possible, though even PETA approves some, some piece silks, I believe. Of course, that's a more extreme end. So most people will say that there are ethical ways to get those. You just want to make sure that they actually are what they claim to be. We'll talk more about greenwashing in an upcoming video. So thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know if you're enjoying the series, if there's anything else that you want to see, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.